Hello, I'm David Dahl, and I'm going to share a presentation regarding almond diseases. This presentation will mostly focus on the principles of disease management, and future presentations will cover specific diseases and their control. As with any good pathology talk, when discussing diseases, we have to start with the disease triangle. The disease triangle is an attempt to help us visualize that disease occurrence is an interactive event. To have disease, we have to have three major influencers, the pathogen, the host, and the environment. These make up the three sides of the triangle. The area of the triangle represents the amount of the disease to expect. All three sides must be present for disease to occur. If one side is not present, disease will not occur. If one side is larger or enlarged, then the, the amount of disease will be increased within those given conditions. Let us cover the three sides of the triangle in more detail. First, let us focus with the host, which is the almond tree. Each cultivar of almonds has a different level of innate resistance. This means that some varieties are more susceptible to diseases than others. For example, butte is more susceptible to brown rot than nonpareil. The growth stage of the plant is also important as diseases may only affect a certain stage. Blossom diseases can only occur when flowers are on the tree, just as foliar diseases can only infect leaves when they're on the tree. Having a high genetic uniformity with the orchard will lead to either an increase or decrease in disease, depending on if that genetic line is less or more resistant. Plant vigor, density, and structure influences the microclimate of the canopy, which also influences the disease. This is kind of integrated into both the environmental and host side of the triangle. A common misconception is that fungicides are considered on the pathogen side of the triangle. In fact, they influence the host side because fungicides protect the plant from infection. This concept is important to remember as ideally, fungicides should be applied prior to an infection event to provide the best disease control. More recently, there have been an increasing number of products that may boost the immune response of the plant. These products also fall on the host side of the triangle. The pathogen also must be present in order to have disease. It also needs to be present within a life stage that can infect the plant. More virulent pathogens or aggressiveness will increase the amount of disease, while less virulent pathogens will cause less. The higher the population of the pathogen present, the more disease we should expect. And vectors may help move the pathogen from one tree to the next, as in the case with ceratocystis, in which fruit flies transfer the disease from one damaged tree to the next. This side of the triangle is best considered to be always present. Our actions may help reduce the amount of overwintering or oversummering inoculum, but most likely we will not be able to eradicate the disease, except on a few occasions. This means that in years which favor disease, flare-ups can occur within an orchard. This is especially true with foliar diseases, as with rust or alternaria, can rarely occur on dry years, but they can flare up in wet springs. The environment probably has the greatest year-to-year -year influence on disease within the orchard. Most fungal and bacterial pathogens of almonds require periods of free moisture. These periods occur during and after rain events until the tree dries. Furthermore, rainstorms help disperse the pathogen through wind splash dispersal of spores. This is essentially when a raindrop hits the fungal spore mass and, and the impact drives them into the air. Wind will then carry them from into neighboring trees or even to neighboring orchards. Wind splash spores can travel a long distance, leading to infections of trees several miles away. Periods of dew can also increase disease risk, and this is more important with secondary cycles of the disease within a tree. A secondary cycle is the infections that occur after the host is already infected. Dew has a strong influence on rust, alternaria, and the rate of anthracnose infections within an orchard. There are multiple canopy diseases of almonds. These diseases affect the tree at varying stages and are caused by both fungal and bacterial pathogens. In time, we will cover them more specifically. But generally, fungi are more prevalent in mild to warmer and wetter weather. These diseases can be managed with fungicides, which are chemicals that target specific pathways of these fungal pathogens. Bacterial diseases, such as bacterial spot and blast, tend to be more prevalent in wet, warm weather. Blast tends to occur when warm weather is followed by a cold snap, which create wounds in the plant's tissues, and bacteria are able to invade these, these wounded tissues. Fungicides do not work to control these controlled bacterial diseases. 
And if they are a problem, treatments containing copper should be considered because they're more effective in reducing bacterial populations. Over the past 15 years of working within almonds, I've made several observations. During bloom, the timing in which most people are spraying, bloom time diseases only seem to show up in extremely wet years. This means that fungicide applications can be made based on predicted weather instead of the calendar and may be withheld if dry conditions occur. Second, springtime diseases tend to be observed more frequently. Many times it is because fungicide applications weren't properly selected or timed during periods of susceptibility. I've also noticed that summer diseases are increasing, and much of this I think is due to increasing humidity within orchards due to increasing density. These diseases need to be controlled in the late spring, not after occurrence. Spring and summer disease occurrence is typically due to missed spray timings, poor fungicide selection, or sometimes just spraying fatigue. Due to the increased risk of spring and summer diseases, it may be more prudent to target disease control later in the bloom cycle to keep the tree protected from petal fall through early to mid spring. All of this matters because once an outbreak occurs, it is nearly impossible to recover for the season or even multiple years. Orchards with outbreak of anthracnose or bacterial spot generally are orchards in which the manager felt the spring sprays weren't needed. For the first few years, very little visible disease occurred, but it was spreading through the orchard, and once a wet spring happened, the problem expanded. Sadly, in these cases, the cleanup is difficult and can take several years to drive the population down. Lastly, many people think that they can spray once they see disease symptoms. This isn't true. By this point, the plant is already infected. Spraying after symptoms occur, especially when rain isn't in the forecast, is a waste of money and the application can accelerate the formation of fungicide resistance. I generally feel that the best taglines for effective disease management is an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure and leaf wetness is a fungi's best friend. Although we will cover more on specific diseases later, a great resource to have on hand is the publication produced by the University of California Agricultural and Natural Resources. It is titled Fungicide, Bactericide, and Biologicals for Deciduous Tree, Fruit, Nut, Strawberry, and Vine Crops. This publication provides insights on disease management by providing ideal spray timings, chemical efficacy, and rotational programs. It is important to note that not all the fungicide trade names will be represented in the studies, but all registered frac groups for the various crops are included in the testing. It can be found at the UCIPM website. Thank you for tuning into this presentation, and please let me know if you have any questions. Please feel free to reach out via the comments, or for more information, please visit www.thealmonddoctor.com.